Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey there, guys. So, we've been looking at XP 32-bit edition. We've looked at a variety of like slipstream versions of Windows XP 32-bit edition. And I thought today maybe we'd look at a slipstream version of Windows XP 64-bit edition. Now, I know from the comments there's been a lot of questions as to what you do or how you use Windows XP 64-bit edition, especially in today's day and age. And the reality is, is that the XP 64-bit edition platform is not the same as the 32-bit edition platform. Okay, so what's the real difference here then? So Windows XP, the 32-bit edition, was really a part two of Windows 2000 desktop. Uh, it also gave some functionality, some tools that were in the server operating system. They brought over to the professional version of Windows XP. But Windows XP, for the most part, as a 32-bit edition, was its own platform. Whereas Ser Server 2003, the non-R2 version, 64-bit edition, is Windows XP 64-bit edition. It's just minus some of the feature sets that you would find in the server. But otherwise, it's the same operating system. And you could find that by the update packages. The update packages for Windows XP 64-bit edition or really all Windows 2003 server edition 64-bit that were modified to run on the XP 64-bit system. So they just changed the installation process for the desktop version of server 2003 64-bit edition. Meaning that after the end of life of XP 64-bit edition, you could still use the server 2003 64-bit edition updates. So while they didn't offer an extended support contract for XP 64-bit edition, they did offer an extended support contract for 2003 64-bit edition. So that gave you the ability to run the updates for the server on the desktop. Now, unfortunately, to do that is not as easy as just, hey, we just double click on this and run it in compatibility mode or something to that effect. It required you to actually modify the update. And since that doesn't exist from a Microsoft perspective, there was no extended support on the XP 64 bit side. That was something that had to be done manually by people that were enthusiasts in the XP 64 bit platform. Now, as it's gotten older, we found that there's more enthusiasts that are interested in screwing around with the operating system than there were when it was first end of life. You gotta understand, XP 64-bit edition was never really all that popular. I actually think that they sold more Microsoft ME copies than they did of 64-bit edition Windows XP. So now that we have people that are enthusiastically modifying Windows XP 64-bit edition, what does that mean for the platform? Well, the end of life for Windows XP 64-bit edition was 2014. Now, keep in mind that technically speaking, XP also received an additional year of updates for security patches. Not part of the extended support program, but based off of, I guess, security holes and bugs they found in 2014 for XP 64-bit edition. And they released some, not all, but some security updates for XP 64-bit edition in 2015. But that was it. XP 64-bit edition died after that point. There were no additional extended supports. Nothing existed for 64-bit edition like that. Now, there was something called X64 point of sale, but that was a completely different operating system than XP 64-bit edition. It wasn't like Windows XP's 32-bit edition where the point of sale system, the point of sale extended, the uh, POS Ready 2009, and the XP operating system as well, as well as Media Center Home and all the other variables all those other varieties were all the same OS in the core. With 64-bit edition, that wasn't the case in the point of sale system. So that left no updates while Windows XP 32-bit edition really lived on until about 2020, 2021 with updates. So what happens now since we didn't have those updates? We don't have that variable. We don't have the ability to run point of sale. We don't have any extended support. Well, that's where the enthusiasts come in. So they created packages using the 2003 standard edition 64-bit platform to allow you to slipstream those updates into XP 64-bit edition. Now, while this won't 
give XP 64 bit edition as much of a patch revision or a, as much of a security update as you would have found in say uh, your Windows XP 32 bit edition. It does give you the additional updates and driver support to support modern hardware. So that pushes the update package for Windows XP 64 bit edition out to late 2016. I believe April was last of 2016 that the server 2003 platform got the extended support contract to push the updates out to. So that gave you an additional one to two years of support for Windows XP Pro 64-bit edition. Now as far as how to get those updates, well in our 32-bit platforms it was really easy, right? We could use WSUS offline, we could push the updates, we could grab them, we could install them on the system. That application does not work on 64-bit edition. So then we had uh, the ability to use WSUS server to push the updates. Now that'll work to push the updates up to the end of life of the original operating system, but it's not gonna push the extended support modified updates to Windows XP 64-bit edition. There's no way to do that. You can't push the point of sale updates to it because again, it's two different core operating systems. So that's not an option either. So what option does exist, at least from what I've been able to find, is there is a built ISO file, an image that'll allow you to install Windows XP 64-bit edition with all of the updates. And if we jump in here and go into the control panel and go to add remove programs, we will see the updates, the rollups that existed for Windows XP Service Pack 2 64-bit edition. And you'll look at this and you'll say, well, that's not that many. And that's true. There's definitely not. However, if we go in through the command line, we can see that somebody had modified the actual update packages like they did in the other slipstreamed versions of Windows XP. For instance, we looked at the integral system which showed the file updates. This shows the same thing. So we have 263 hotfixes installed on this Windows XP 64-bit edition. So the actual installation package is about 900 meg, which won't fix, fit on a regular CD. Um, so if you decide to actually use this ISO file, just make sure you mount it as an ISO file on a thumb drive, or you may have to use a DVD if you're gonna install it onto a piece of physical hardware. Just keep in mind that whoever built the original image, for whatever reason, used a volume key. So you're gonna need a volume license key to do that. I, I'm not 100% sure where you could find one, but if you could locate one and use the installation to install on the volume license side, that'll give you access into the system uh, as you see it. So we have 263 hotfixes installed, but let's take a look at this operating system with these hotfixes installed, and let's compare it to the non-slipstream version to see if there's any security differences between the two operating systems. Okay guys, so this is the other XP 64-bit edition system. And what I did is I opened up the command prompts. We could just make sure we keep track of the names. So the system specifically that doesn't have all of the um, slipstream updates is YTD XP 64, um, which has a 242.226 IP address. The machine that does have all the updates, including the strip stream, uh, slip stream, is the TGO X6402, and that's specifically 242.225. So this is the one that has all the updates, including the slip stream and the rollups with the 2003 patches. Let's scan these two systems and see what we get back. Okay, folks. So ran the scans against our two different Windows XP systems. Our Windows XP Pro 64-bit edition without any of the slipstreamed updates, with the slipstreamed updates, and then one with and without the firewall on both sets of, uh, on both of those systems. So what we'll start with, I guess, for the sake of this, is we'll go into the Windows XP vanilla 64-bit edition um, with the firewall on. And in here, we're gonna see we have uh, six infos and much like most of the other systems that we've seen with Windows Firewall turned on, we don't see much of anything. Um, so in, at, in reality, the vanilla version with the firewall on is relatively secure, all things considered, as long as the firewall is still running. If we jump back to the actual screen here where we check out, say, the, uh, the slip version with the firewall on, we see 
roughly the same thing. We have five infos, so we're, we're showing pretty secure with the Windows firewall on. Now, once we shut the Windows firewall off, this is generally where we're going to see a major difference. And the reason, again, is because in Windows XP, it doesn't work like Windows 7. So in Windows 7, the firewall was only really a buffer. It really only contained stop people from accessing the system. But there were no listening ports for random things because Windows 7 is designed not to listen on ports that aren't actually being used. But Windows XP is not like that. Windows XP listens on everything. And then the firewall is the buffer between the internet or public access and the actual service. So you have to open the firewall to allow it through. And if you shut the firewall off, then everything is listening and you can connect to anything. So with that being said, let's take a look on the Windows XP with the firewall off in the vanilla version of 64-bit edition. So if we look now, we see this is huge. So we have 81 criticals, 121 high, 39 mediums. We have one low and 149 infos. And if we drill into this, there's quite a bit in here. Um, again, unsupported installation detection. Yeah, no, no duh, right? So XP has been end of life for a while now. So yeah, we, we're going to see that. So there's quite a bit in here from a Windows XP 64 bit edition. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you should be aware that that exists with the Windows XP 64 bit edition. Now, keep in mind now, with the 2003 server 64 bit edition standard drivers, and updates installed on the slip version of the actual XP 64-bit edition with the firewall turned off. We notice that we only have one high, one medium, and then 27 info. And if I drill down into these, the high that's listed in here is specifically a KB that was fixed in Windows 10. So there is no fix for it. However, there are registry modifications you can make to your 64-bit system as far as repairing that KB. Now, I'll add the KB number specifically into the description of this uh, video so that way you have it. And the link to the Windows 10 patch if you want to do some uh, investigation into that as far as securing your Windows XP 64-bit edition with the Slipstream updates installed. But I would say that the Slipstream updates really, really help considering, I mean, there's a major difference between the two versions here, right? So... Um, I would say that that's probably the best bet from a security perspective on if you're going to run a 64-bit version of Windows XP with the updates. All things considered, that's probably your best bet for running that currently right now in 2024. Um, obviously, running Windows 7 is a much better option, but if that's not an option for you and you want to run the XP 64-bit edition, um, then yeah, I'll put the ISO file link down in the description. Check it out, download it, use that as your build. As long as you could find a key for it, you should be good to go. That's that's a pretty good score, pretty solid score for a system that's been end of life. Well, I mean, in this case, since 2016. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy.